Okay, so just 10 years plus since the Matrix uh, bullet time effect came out. Uh, well, I was still in school by then, so now that I'm out, I finally got some time to play around. Um, we got 24 frames, the 10 second timeline in Houdini as usual, but we're gonna stop time to zero. We're gonna make a create a dynamic simulation, simulate the whole thing, stop time to zero, and let's stop yapping. Let's get down to business. Stop yapping. Okay, so we're gonna begin this whole thing. I'm gonna begin by dropping in my geometry, name it appropriately, and one thing I'm gonna say is that uh, you can you have three options. Go to Ray, uh, 3ds Max, use Rayfire to pretty much fragment your geometry or your text or your collisions, whatever we're gonna be kind of simulating over here. Then bring it into Houdini. It's gonna have the groups already set up for you, so that'll be really that an advantage over there. But most people don't have. Uh, Rayfire and 3ds Max, or they do, but they don't have Rayfire, so we're gonna skip that option. Second option, you can actually go ahead and drop in a font uh, in Houdini, uh, and whatever um, whatever name that you wanna uh, actually use, or whatever you know, whatever text that you're gonna have to put up, put it up and do whatever you gotta do to it. So pretty much uh, poly split. If you want to, you have to split it up into many little segments, like so, and it'd be kind of a lot of work. So you have to split it up eventually to all the uh, segments that that's, that's actually necessary, as you see right now. That's how it looks. So it's going to be like, you're going to have to go through the whole thing and actually do that to get your shards ready. But I'm sorry, I'm not going to be going that route because it's going to take a lot of time to edit this one text. So the style that I'm going to be using in this particular instance uh, is uh, the Illustrator style. So I'm going to go ahead and pop up Illustrator. And once in Illustrator, all you got to do is uh, go ahead and set up your new file and name it up to whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Explode. Or yeah, explode is the text I'm going to use in this particular instance, and okay. And pretty much all you got to do now is actually press T and put your text in the middle, and I'm going to put mine as explode. Uh, your text is pretty much whatever you feel like. I'm actually maxim uh, increase the size for this. It's going to be really big in uh, Houdini. And select your font. So I like uh, this right here, stencil bold. I like this. It's kind of thick. I like that. So once you got that set up like so, all you gotta do is actually go to um, text or type or whatever it is. Type over here, create outlines, or con press Control Shift O, or you can just come over here, right click, and say, select this. Oops, select using the uh, pick tool over there and say create outlines and now you have three options pretty much you can use the end key to get the pencil so pretty much you can draw with that you can use a knife if you don't want to use the pencil uh, if I can find it I don't know why it's at exactly but you can use a knife or if you don't want to use a knife you can use a pen tool so, but the pencil is probably the easiest thing if possible cause uh, I'm going to put my stroke over here and the pen pencil will be the easiest thing call because all you gotta do is actually just pretty much go around and right now I'm actually drawing the line even though I know it's not clearly visible but it's actually there so go ahead and do that make some scribbly lines and I'm gonna make mine I'm gonna be right back Okay, and so once you get your file, kind of, you know, however you like it, I use the pen tool in my case, but if you wanted soft lines, you could use the pencil tool to actually get the, you know, smooth lines like so, but I did not use the pencil, I used the pen, and I made sharp lines, kind of, because shards are always kind of sharp. It's all a matter of preference. Don't follow my style, do your way, do your thing. So next, what you're going to do is actually select this. Select the curve that you just made, or the line which you just made. Go to Object, Path, and say Divide Object Below. 
pretty much that splits the object below if you had several paths you know made out differently just select one by one and actually go ahead redo the option as many times as you have the curves next what you're gonna go is just file save as this is gonna save in my local uh, Houdini illustrator uh, path uh, then it's an same name so that then I got Illustrator 8 as the file format I might use that's the legacy format okay and pretty much now you can go back to Houdini okay once in Houdini if you're gonna use the police play tutorial you might wanna go ahead finish up doing the rest of the text and then catch up so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually under sourcing drop in a file and we're gonna select the uh, file which we just made right now so it's uh, explode and it's somewhere over here it's pretty big obviously there you go it's pretty big so as you can see compared to the screen compared to the grid over there that's pretty big so probably should have rescaled it before we actually um, exported it but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just do a transform on it cause uh, it's already inside okay so I got mine scaled up to right inside the um, grid right here so pretty much everything is set up if you want to you can go ahead convert to a uh, polygon you got some few curves and all that kind of stuff you can use a delete to actually go ahead and delete those so I'm gonna actually go ahead do a convert because that actually does it for me automatically <laughs> so I convert so pretty much all the curves are deleted and okay so we're gonna go ahead and set up the groups for this uh, so we can simulate this so first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is actually same old technique pretty much I'm not even gonna try to show a new technique cause uh, we're gonna create an attribute create and the attribute is gonna be under the point primitive uh, primitive class and the name is gonna be the same number same name I always use every single time and it's gonna be primitive uh, for the value of here, so the value is gonna dollar PR is gonna be the value. So now you should have a primitive attribute called primnum with the value one, which is just the prim number. So you should have a prim value number that goes from one, from zero to two twenty six, pretty much. So what you wanna do next is actually extrude this, and that looks fairly thick. I'm gonna initialize extrusion, and that looks good enough for me. If you want to increase it, you can. And we're going to go ahead and partition those or pretty much group each one of them so you can actually simulate them in DOPS. So what you're going to drop next is uh, call it frag. And we're going to use the primnum to actually pretty much split this up. So primnum. And now you should have 226 groups or 227 groups with all different kind of shapes and things in them and with all the little detail that's actually necessary on the inside so we got that set up looking good so now what we need to do now is actually output this so utility null and we're gonna call it the code and let's simulate this in DOPS so let's set the DOP network. Okay, so up on scene level, I'm actually going ahead and tab in a DOP network. Name it appropriately. I just made my, named mine the simulation. I'm going to go ahead and go in. And first thing I'm going to drop is under objects. We're going to drop in a fractured object. And you want to go ahead and look for the object, which in our case should be on the very top right here, which is the code accept let's create it on frame one so we good on that well depending on you know how you want to actually do this I, I can actually tell you this you got various forces over here so you can use a VOP force 